My name is Sarah Maslinier, and I'm the author of Horse Crazy. This is Stellar Maslinier, and we are going to read a little bit from my upcoming book. I hope you enjoy. In the decade I've worked for the New York Times, I've reported across the country and around the world. And as soon as I file each story, I do one thing before I head home. I search for the horses. The rider in me wants to gaze at them, stroke them, gallop with them. But the reporter in me has only one goal, to know their stories. And so I found myself, notebook in hand, interviewing the keepers of the street horses of Senegal, West Africa, as the animals slept in corrals of parked cars. I've traced the Viking history of the canny Norwegian fjord horse, who extracted us both from a peat bog in the Scottish Highlands. And I've quizzed Indian soldiers about the indigenous battle horses I charged through a quarry in Rajasthan. For my entire life, I've sought out horses endlessly, even in the urban world in which I grew up. As a girl, I found them on the Upper West Side in a barn disguised as an old townhouse. I found them underneath the Triborough Bridge in Harlem and stampeding through Central Park. And yet all this time, I never asked myself why. Why do I love horses? That's because the answer has always been, because horses. It's a response that anybody who has ever felt the ineluctable tug of their big amber eyes, in which you see something much more than your own reflection, or who knows the peace of their shattering wildness, immediately understands. Because horses answer enough. But while to me horses feel like an inevitability, a part of my body and my life in a way, I don't question any more than I would the rise and fall of my own chest. Hey, Stella. In fact, why is the sum total of my job description as a journalist? So it was only a matter of time before I turned the query on myself. That quest became this book, and it expanded far beyond just me, because I'm not alone. As I sought out the horses, I found they're humans. The two teen sisters who bought a wild pony, only to set her forever free. The executive who left corporate America for a life patrolling Central Park as a mounted ranger the Pennsylvania man who ran an equine version of the FBI, and the fox hunter who galloped away from a crumbling marriage, and the diplomat's daughter who wanted forbidden horses so badly she smuggled their semen across the sea. Horses lend themselves to stories. I once wrote that in the New York Times. In the United States in particular, horses, their manes streaming, their nostrils flaring, <laughs> hooves thudding, carry with them something of our projected national psyche. There are over 9 million horses in America, far more than even when they were our only way to get around. They're not necessary at all, yet for some, they seem more so. Here, they are the furls of the American flag in equid form, imbued with our narratives of national identity. They carry on their backs the tales we tell ourselves about who we are, about who I am. When I finally asked myself why the search grew epic, I dug for the reason in the belly of a 747 huddling with a trio of Dutch warmbloods as we crossed the Atlantic in the cargo hold. I looked for it floating in the dawn waters off the coast of Virginia as all around me ponies swam in the salt. I sought it underneath their thick lips, and I listened to it in the syncopation of their seven-league strides, in the science behind their piano key teeth and the music of their bugling whinnies. Their theories. A horse's stride replicates an essential rhythm we all felt for those first nine months of our lives, rocking in amniotic fluid as our mother went about the world. Another posits power. Horses lend us their own, extend our feeble human legs with their muscled limbs. They allow us to tap into their strength and seize it as ours, to feel speed and might far beyond our capacity, to touch something close to the infinite. On my own two legs, I'm just Sarah, lent four more, I'm formidable. Both theories seem right, it both don't come close to capturing what it feels when a horse snuffles my palm or graces me with the perfect jump or simply stands still in a paddock in beauty that hurts. At last, I realized that the only one capable of answering my question would be those who know me best in the world, the horses themselves. Horse Crazy is structured around the lifelong dialogues I've had with these animals. Each chapter is named after a horse who told me its story or helped me to write my own. I don't believe that riding a horse is a dance, as some may say, with a partner who enjoys the experience the same way I do. Instead, I believe it is a conversation, an intimate dialogue between a creature that over the millennia has become a perfect foil and partner to humankind and to me. I realized 
I've been having that conversation all my life in Horse Crazy. I'll tell you what I've heard.